Do you kind of get a bit stressed when it comes to chipping off muddy lies, wet lies around the greens? Are you a bit worried that you're gonna duff the shot or overcompensate and thin it? Well, you are not alone because I've been there too. Today, we're gonna give you some really easy ways that we can pretty much ensure you will be chipping around the greens out of muddy lies or whatever with a lot more confidence. And because this is the art of simple golf, it's not rocket science. Let's get into it. Chipping around the greens so you're not duffing it, especially off muddy lies, is not as hard as you might think. See, a lot of people, they tend to dig down too much, getting this leading edge into the club, just digging into the turf. We want to be using the bounce, right? We want the club to be skipping off the turf, whether it's wet, whether it's dry, that's pretty much what we want. But the reason why it's harder on um, muddy lies or wet lies, whatever it might be, is because it's softer, so it's much easier to dig down. So we really have to accentuate these feelings to not duff those chip shots, all right? So, the first thing we're gonna cover is just the grip, right? Dead easy. All I want you to do is grip a little bit more in the palm of your hand, okay? Instead of it being more in the fingers, let's just get it a little bit more in the palm of the hand. Why? Because that's going to just, I don't like the word, but it's going to deaden the hands a little bit so you use your the sort of body and momentum of the club instead of being so sort of wristy with it. That's why it's going to help. So just shifting it, you know, a hair, a little bit more in the palm of the hand is just gonna give you a little bit more passiveness with the wrists and the hands, okay? That's it, try it. It really does make a difference. This is about using uh, the bounce of the club, but not getting screwed by digging into the sole. And all you need to do, right, is to, tilt the club up a little bit. And what that's gonna encourage is less friction at the bottom here. Really quite easy, right? It's gonna have less friction, so as you make the, you know, the chipping action, it's not going to dig in as likely. So it's like a little cheat, a little hack. So all you need to do is take your chipping stance with your sand wedge or whatever it might be, and you're just gonna stand a little bit closer. Let's say we've got the slightly weaker grip. You're gonna stand a little bit closer to it. So we're more upright, okay? And we're just going to still try and make the same kind of chipping action. And we're gonna go on to that a little bit in a moment. We're gonna feel the same, but I know that this is not going to dig in as much, okay? And that's all we're gonna do. In that sense. And the chances of you duffing it have reduced by, I don't know, 30%. It's just so much harder. And it's actually really good to do this with, um, you know, I've got an eight iron here and it almost feels like a chipping stroke, okay? So that, let's say that's where my normal setup would be for a chip uh, with an eight iron, a bump and run. I'm gonna stand just that little bit closer, okay? So the heel is raised and I'm just going to do the same sort of action and move it through that way, okay? And we've come to the practice green because I want you to practice this first, either at home, in the yard, or whatever. Don't just rely straight on the course, but it doesn't require that much practice. The next technique, as it were, that we're going to apply, so we're not gonna duff chip shots as much, is about where we want the club to return to. Too many people, when they're chipping, right, they kind of dig down that way. We don't want that. We don't want that action because that's what's going to dig down. We want it to pass through. We don't want too much divot. We want it to simply bounce. And we do that by trying to get the club to return where we set it up at impact, okay? So we're setting up at impact. Instead of the hands being pressed forward, I want you to set up almost feeling like the hands are just you know, a little bit further behind. That's what we want. So they're a little bit further behind here. Just by 
just by moving the hands back a couple of inches, you're gonna be in a much more neutral and easier placement to just allow the club to drop back at the impact area and brush through. It's really quite phenomenal how much difference this makes, but there is like an extra element if you wanna take it to get that extra little finesse, okay? So that's all we do. We drop the hands back to feel like the shaft is pointing. We've got the sternum over the ball. We've got, you know, about 60% on the left side. And what do we do from here? We rock the shoulders, you know, keeping everything moving this way. Nice, supple, feeling the club heavy. And as we come through, we're gonna add on just an extra. So we're feeling the club just return back to center here. Okay. But if we want an extra little bit of finesse, so, let me just kind of show you the technique first. So I'm not going to stand closer to this one. Let's just focus on the hands being further back. Very nicely. Let's say I want to have a little bit more, um, you know, flight, a little bit more control, a little bit more spin. What I'm going to do, instead of being rigid with the hands sort of coming through, Instead of being rigid this way, I'm going to add a little bit of flow, a little bit of suppleness by allowing this left arm or lead arm to fold, okay? Being sort of tucked in here. And what that's gonna do is just allow a little bit more acceleration, but without any more distance or power. So it's giving me a little bit more zip, a little bit more. And it's going to feel a little bit like I'm doing this, Okay, but we're keeping the right arm straight and we're allowing it, the left arm just to fold in this way. But see how the right arm is still kind of uh, firm and guiding? We're just soft with this left hand here. And the beauty of that is it's gonna give you a little bit more height, a little bit more spin, but it is like the sort of next level of it. Okay, so let's say we're just going to the corner of the green here, right? show you this way I'm gonna do that so I've got my setup I'm moving the hands back slightly my focus is returning back to center like this all right returning back to center there just clipped it off the top nice little big chip small pitch shot wonderful control okay so We've got the techniques, right? You're on a regular shot here. What club do you choose? What is it you need to use? If you haven't really played, which I haven't, the sand wedge seems a bit of a gamble because my margin for error is a lot less. So I'm going to opt for the nine iron. So then, because I've practiced even just a little bit, I know that it's gonna fly about 60% of the way and roll about 40% of the way. Something like that, okay? Maybe an eight iron would be a better shot here. Let it roll a little bit more. But as we saw earlier, it's a little bit spongy here. But as we're practicing this, I'm gonna make sure that I pick my target. I've got my landing spot, which is a little sort of lighter patch of grass there. And I'm going to only choose one or two of the little tips I provided. One, I'm just gonna go a little bit steeper. And two, I'm just going to allow the lead arm to be a little bit softer through, okay? Just to have a little bit mo more momentum getting through it as opposed to stabbing it too much. So it's gonna feel a little bit like a putt, but with a bit of softness in that left arm. So here we go. All right, not too bad. But let's say I wanted to go with the sand iron. My landing spot changes. But that shot there was so much easier. And if I have to play a sand iron, it's pretty wet here. So I have to make sure that I've practiced this enough to be able to fly it about 80% of the way and let it sort of hop and roll a little bit. That's the idea. So 
I've got my, okay, that's too soft. That's going too long. And I'm sticking with the same sort of technique, raising the shaft just a little bit, keeping everything turning through and a soft left hand. There. And I barely took any sort of divot. Just use the bounce on the club to bring it up. A lot less stress than trying to keep everything rigid and dig down, okay? There's a couple of scenarios. One worked out a tiny bit better than the other, but it's about what works for you that is the key. So there you have it. Go out and practice that. You've got the grip. You've got the raising of the shaft at a dress, standing a little bit closer to reduce the friction. You've got the moving the hands back just a couple of inches so that shaft is straighter as you set up to it. And then to take it to the extra little level, as you come through, just add a little, little bit of softness with that left hand, with the left arm, lead arm, whatever you've got. <laughs> so they're really easy, but I promise you, they're gonna help tremendously. If you've got any questions, just let me know and like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, put these into action, see and play around with different clubs and you'll be good to go.